If you want to know how much God loves you, look at the cross of Jesus. That's what the Bible tells us. There'll be good times and there'll be bad times. So there'll be easy times and there'll be hard times. But you cannot describe God's love based on your experience or circumstances. You always base your lo- God's love for you on the cross of Jesus Christ. Our understanding of God somehow ties into our experience with our own parents. And sometimes we take our experience and apply it to God because we don't know better. And we tend to ascribe those characteristics to God. And very often, we don't end up with the right picture of God. Some aspects uh, of God as our Heavenly Father, the true picture. God is an unchanging Heavenly Father. His nature does not change like the weather. He's, if you want constant. Another aspect of God, He's an unfailing Heavenly Father. Unfailing. He never fails. That has to be settled in your heart. My God never leaves me. Never. That's my Father. My Heavenly Father. Inside you, you should be so convinced God is too good to do me wrong. God is too wise to make a mistake. God is too strong to let me down. That's my heavenly father. The third aspect I just want to mention is that he is a bountiful, generous father. He's a bountiful, generous father. He gives. He gives to all. He gives liberally and he gives without Now, our picture of God must be like that. My God, like it says in Psalm 84, verse 11, God is a sun and a shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from those who walk. I pray. Number four, our fourth aspect of God is God is a merciful Father. A merciful Father. A a Father who is slow to anger, abounding in mercy. God is a merciful Father. God. He is slow to anger, abounding in us. Now, this is not for us to take advantage or misuse, but to understand that even if I make a mistake, God is a merciful God. I can turn to Him. I can acknowledge my mistake. I can say, God, I'm sorry. I I messed up. God, please forgive. There is mercy. Five, He's a redeeming Father. So as God who is redeeming, He always looks at our life He looks at things in our life with a redemptive heart and with redemptive eyes. That means he is looking to bring things back, to restore, to rebuild, to raise up, to put them back into their original state. And there is nothing that God cannot redeem. Number six, he is an accepting father. He is looking at you with eyes of love. No condemnation. You are accepted in his presence. He's a father of abundant grace. Abundant grace. Now what is grace? Grace gives us what we don't earn. Grace gives us what we don't deserve. That is grace. But God in his grace, he takes the weak things of the world. He confounds things that are mighty. He takes things that are nothing and he uses them for his glory. He's an empowering father. He's a father who empowers us. He, he looks at the best in us. He believes in us. He's an infinite father. He's a God who's beyond measure. There's no measure to who he is, what he can do, what he can provide, what he can supply. So he never grows old. He never grows tired. He never runs out of wisdom. He's infinite. God, you're bigger than my biggest problem. You're bigger than my greatest need. You're bigger than my greatest dream. You're bigger than my greatest vision. You're bigger. You're bigger. So the Bible tells us God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that works in us. So in one way, God is both a father and a mother. He's complete. He's the El Shaddai. We must reject self-deception and Satan's lies. Self-deception means, look, I've got some wrong ideas about God because of, like we said, experiences and so on. We need to get rid of it. This is what the Word of God says. This is who my God is. I'm going to embrace Him for who He is. This is my Heavenly Father. 